This is BFBS Esports Live with OJ Borge. Hello and welcome to Esports Live on BFBS. I'm your host, OJ Borge. I say I'm your host. I'm one of your hosts. I'm alongside combat medical technician and founder and CEO of Skull Esports, Jonah Jupp. Jonah, how are you, buddy? We're good. Week nine. Week nine. Nine it's episodes. Nine episodes. And I'm into the second week of, and you're a combat medical technician. I've still got a little cough, a tickly cough. You still oh. haven't sorted me out. How, how am I going to fix this on the battlefield? I can't, I can't do anything for you, man. I, a I really little can't. sip of water. Anyway, welcome along to the show. Of course, we'll be talking about gaming and, and esports through the forces as well, what we've been doing over the past nine weeks. Um, on the show tonight, we'll be hearing an interview with Jonah I did with Saj, army vet and content creator for Skull Esports. Really, really powerful interview, actually. He was talking about living with PTSD and how gaming has helped and supported him through the tough times. It's, um, it's a great conversation, really, really powerful, as I said, and some great advice that uh, Saj had with us. Uh, plus, as ever, we will have the War Room. It is open every Tuesday night from 6.30. We'll host a gaming lobby where you can compete against Jonah. Now, Jonah, we were supposed to be playing Modern yes. Warfare 3. What happened? Look, I guess a poor preparation because I've got no excuse, really. I, I've got the... Uh, I moved, actually, I'm, I'm airing live from camp uh, for this episode. I was at home. Uh, but I haven't downloaded Modern Warfare on my new laptop. Oh, that shows how much I play the game, let's be real. Such excuses. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, instead we are playing Fall Guys um, again this week. If anyone who wants to join, the lobby code is J2VBZ. That's Juliet 2 Victor Bravo Zulu. There it uh, is. Wants to join. I, the, know, I have to do it now. It's that's how I love it. So jump in there, have a crack against Jonah. I do love how he manages to present and play at the same time. Although I think you've been pretty unsuccessful with most of the games we've had on so far. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't been brilliant. Jonah, when, when you game and when you play the campaign modes or the story modes of most games, every now and again, you get stuck into a game and it's like being in a film. It's, it's that good. Can you think of any of the great games you've played over the years? And obviously you're going to have to answer pretty specifically here considering our next guest. So which games have you played that you've enjoyed being part of? I think Red Dead Redemption 2 was a fantastic game. Ooh. However, Call of Duty is also a better option in yeah. terms of... Uh, in terms of game, but exactly that yeah, you see, also yeah. The Last of Us is quite well. Good as well. Yeah, now I you've know. said it, you see, because um, and we have tried to get him on the past couple of weeks, but for reasons I think we told him the wrong time, and then he was ill one week. But we've managed to get him fabulous, to get him on, and it's Jeffrey Pierce who joins us from where, Jeffrey. <laughs> I'm in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Ah, well, listen, it's great to have you on. And I mean what I say here, because you have had some of the great roles if you look through the games. You've played Tommy, who was Joel's brother in The Last of Us uh, and The Last of Us Part Two, which I, I sort of had to force myself through because I felt the story so keenly. It was such a story. Mm. Uh, you're in Call of Duty. It was, yeah. Call of yeah, um, you also Call of Duty Ghosts, Infinite Warfare, and I met you at the launch of Call of Duty World War II. Um, what is it like when you're part of these games, especially something so iconic as The Last of Us? Uh, the Last of Us in particular is that it's a special one. Like, I don't meet anybody under the age of 25 who hasn't had their philosophy of life shaped by that game. It's crazy. Uh, and I spent a lot of time, I never did the conventions or anything like that in conjunction. So I didn't have a lot of real direct one-on-one -on -one interaction with people who had been affected by the game. But over the past year, I went to Wales, and then I went and did one in Arizona, and uh, I'm going to Australia to do one next month. And the, the, um, the number of people, like, genuinely emotionally impacted by that story, by the characters, it's beyond anything I've ever experienced. Because it's an interactive movie, that's the thing. You're so in it. And when, and when the story writing is so good and the acting's so good... Have you played through the games yourself? Oh, yeah. And yeah, what, yeah. What is that like I, when you're playing I, I, as yourself? I, I, well, it, it, it's not something that it hits every time. Even knowing Troy and Ashley and knowing the story really intimately, emotionally, it's impactful every time because what they put together is so well done. It's such an emotional game. We do get emotional about them when we're in them. Um, of course, The Last of Us, it's done what a lot of games don't do, which is where it makes it to the bigger screen. It makes it into a TV series. What was it like taking the characters? Because obviously you played a different character in the TV series than you did in the games. What was it like seeing it become so big? And it was another story which you'd played the games, you watched it on TV. Again, it was an emotional watch. 
It was, uh, it's interesting because it's an incredible amount of work to do a 10, 20, 10, 12, 13 episode high end series. Like the crew is committing to a year of their life and more on each end. And I showed up to set and of the 300 people on the crew, 280 of them took the job because it was the last of us, because the game had impacted their lives. And they wanted it to be perfect. So that experience was like nothing I've ever seen because they had a good budget, but they put so much extra care because they didn't want to screw it up. They felt like they had a responsibility the same way I think that everybody in the cast did to sort of supporting what the game had achieved. And just like the game, I mean, it's ridiculous how good it turned out. I mean, like it's just, there's so many places it can go wrong in between A and Z. And uh, it's incredible when something turns out to be mediocre, much less uh, uh, high quality. Yeah, well, no, it was absolutely was. I know Jonah was a massive fan, and I think you've possibly got the best beard on TV. Jonah, you were a massive fan of the beard that he had. It's, it's, fan it's fantastic. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, the I'm the just jealous. did all the it? work for me. I didn't have to do any <laughs> acting at all. Sit back, let the beard do its thing. It was such a winner. We, we don't have a ton of time, but I just want to ask you one more question, if that's okay, Jeffrey. Um, and yeah, that is, what, what is the process like when you are making these characters for TV? Because, you know, I, I've, I've seen pictures of you in a, a very tight-fitted suit with ping-pong balls all over it. What is that? <laughs> what, what, is, what is the process like of acting for a computer game rather than acting for The Last of Us on TV? Uh, it's the difference between um, going out and playing Army as a kid where everything is in your imagination, which is can be a powerful experience if everybody is committed in, in, to the same level of work. Um, Call of Duty World War II, we just had a blast. We were like children running around in our tight fitting suits with ping pong balls and blue rifles, but committed, you know, as deeply as you can. But then when you show up on set and you get to spend hours with wardrobe and sit with the props guys and the armorer and say, okay, well, I want these things. What if I can, can I get an M4 instead of an M16? What about a sidearms? Can I carry a 45? And taking all this sort of like gack that you would want to accrue during the game and applying that to the character I, it just made playing the part live really, really easy. Um, but yeah, imagination is everything on a motion capture stage. And then seeing and believing everything you have is is uh, is the key on a soundstage. Well, listen, I, I have enjoyed your performances on TV and I enjoy them every time I play through them. You are, for me, one of the great actors that I've ever seen in a computer game. So, Jeffrey Pierce, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. Now, if we talk about playing through games, I mean, it is one thing that I think if you don't play computer games and if, if you don't play the campaign modes or the story modes of these mm -hmm. games, you, you don't realise how in-depth and enthralling it can be. You get dragged into the characters. It is like the great... I mean, some of them are rubbish, but some of them, when they really grab you, they're just great stories. Yeah, absolutely. I was sort of asking for your opinion you, there, Jonah. Can, yeah, we can hear yeah, you. I, is it, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Yes, can you we can. Yes. I was like, well, my, my mic isn't lighting up. What the? Anyway, yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the majority of the games I buy is purely for the fact of the campaign. You know, I mean, even the last Modern Warfare 3 was actually pretty decent. Oh. Although a very short campaign, I think the acting in it was fantastic. And I think the quality of the games and the way they can interpret an actor uh, into the games has, has got much, much better. Over the years, 100%. yeah, and the characters that that you end up seeing every now and again, characters like the Jeffrey Pierce has played, or like Captain Price or Soap McTavish, yes. if you've played the Call of Duty games, they become your favourite returning characters. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, I won't do a spoiler, although I sort of am. But certain characters from the Call of Duty world, I swear, have been killed off more than once. It's becoming a little bit like Dallas. Yeah, but there's also the pressure for the actors that replace like previous ones to also portray the character the similarly or the same i mean i think they a lot of franchises counteract that by changing the age of the character and then you know somehow they're back from the dead or you know sometimes timelines overlap and that's when fans notice and then also if the franchise doesn't get that right then yeah things yeah. come crashing down pretty quickly. yeah they yeah. do and i mean we're talking to jeffrey i mean one of the ones we talked about was the last of us i think i think if you look at the great story films the last of us is one which is brutal in parts. I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, when I meant it when I said it, I had to struggle through it because I was so emotionally involved and in tears at times. Which you wouldn't, you know, back in the day, you wouldn't have thought you're going to get upset at a computer game. 
yeah exactly and i mean i know friends as well um and colleagues that have got uh tattoos of like similar to ellie's from the last of us and things like that because people are so emotionally invested in games like that and storylines um that yeah i mean it has an impact on people especially at a young age you know who are watching these things it is it's but i that's why i think in some respects games are better than films because you can actually be properly emotionally invested in them but yeah i mean that's an argument for another day it is an argument for another day um the, th the thing is, I guess, I mean, obviously, this is a show about esports. This is esports live mm. on BFBS is what it is. So esports needs the internet. But you will be in place in the world if you're in the forces where you don't have either internet or decent internet. So therefore, yeah. if you have a console with you or a PC or a laptop, I guess playing through a game, playing through a storyline is a great way of losing yourself if you've got some time off. Yeah, exactly. And also... You don't need internet for it. I mean, of course, you've got the initial download, which sometimes, thank you very much, Activision, is rather large. But, um, you know, other times, you know, it's definitely worth it. Even if it takes you out for 30 minutes to an hour, it's uh, some time lost to, to put, sort of wind down and, you know, close your mind off from the things around you. But, yeah. Absolutely that. Although I still, one of my favorite questions, which I guess doesn't hit with everyone, is always asking whoever it is from around uh, when we chat to them is to ask them um, what their ping is when they're actually... On, <laughs> yeah. on maneuvers i love that uh right let us let's get this interview up because this is exciting it's something mm. yes. that we chatted about yesterday um uh myself and jonah jupp we caught up with a friend and skull colleague of yours jonah now sag yes. is someone you've known for ages you've said before you love him he's a veteran having served for 15 years he's now a content creator and gamer for skull esports and you know i was going to start the conversation by asking sag about how long he'd know jonah but i thought you know what a better question is how long has he actually liked jonah Saj um, hates me. Saj absolutely still to, hates me. Still, hates still, me. still to be confirmed, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, when, when did you two meet? Uh, oh, that's a good question. A long time honestly, ago, though. Yeah, I think I've, it's been quite a while, hasn't it, Jonah, to be honest year, with you? year and a half, um, two years ago, I think? Yeah, about two years ago, I think, when we were, the esports was kicking off. Yeah. I think we, we talked in passing a little bit on the Discord. When you started gaming in the forces, Saj, um, how much did it help you? Uh, oh, hell of a lot. I used to squirrel myself away. If I wasn't out um, socializing, I squirreled myself away playing Skyrim or whatever game I got my hands on. Um, I used to set myself a challenge each month uh, when I was in the block to find a game and complete it in a month. If you don't mind me asking this, no, however briefly or detailed you want to be with the question, um, you've suffered with PTSD. How has that affected yep. your life? Oh, yeah, uh, massively. Um, absolutely turned my world upside down. Um, it was something that brewed up over years. And then when it finally got too much, with it, again, gaming, um, I used it to hide myself away um, with issues that were brewing. I was using it to mask like my pain and things like that. But it's quite difficult at times. It does come and go. Um, but yeah, um, but with um, esports and like with Scal and like when I was with the ROC esports as well, um, it gave me an outlet. Um, it made me feel like I actually had, you know, I was I could do something and not be judged because I wasn't like I didn't see the the scattiness or the the like the bad bit of everything. It, I was a faceless person online doing it, so it made me feel a bit better about myself. There is something, Saj. I think you mentioned before. There is something in it that when you are playing a game and you you can't see each other, you don't normally have a camera on. At least I don't when I game and you're sat on the sofa, whether you're on the the PlayStation or whatever. There is something in the middle of a game when you're going somewhere that it does break down the barriers and you feel like you can be more open. Yeah, absolutely. Um, being able to take on like a complete different persona, whether it be a pre-generated character or one that you make yourself, uh, you know, it, it it is a great form of escapism. Um, and I I do do a lot of it with uh, Dungeons and Dragons as well, like, uh, gaming with that. That that was something that really helped me with my PTSD. And Tag is a um, Basically, it's military-run charity, and it's tactical advance to gaming, and they are working with Game Therapy UK. Um, some of that I'm starting to get involved, trying to get involved with, and they're using um, tabletop games and things to try and help people with PTSD and mental health issues. So, Saj, what would you say to people listening to this? And maybe they they are suffering from what you're suffering from. Maybe they're worried that it's that reach out that might be in the future. Honestly, reach out. It, it is the hardest and scariest thing you'll ever do in your life. Um, but it, it 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 will absolutely change your life. It's the hardest step to take, but once you've done it, the rest of it does seriously get easy. Um, it, I I remember when when I first went in, and I spoke to my boss, and I said to my boss, "I'm suffering with um, with something." I didn't know what it was at the time. I just thought I was really depressed, 
Um, but my work had been affected. I was messing up at work and there were, you know, and I literally just went in, broke down, told him, and it honestly felt like the world to come off my chest. And I just felt a hundred times better for it. And then like the, the process started, uh, like they took me into the med center, the med center then sent me on to like DCMH and everything like that. And it just rolled and yeah, the support was really good. They call the esports community a community and they call it a community for a reason, don't they, Jonah? We're one big family at the end of the day. Like the, I'd rather spend that 10, 15 minutes out of my day, you know, to speak to someone who's suffering with something, you know, then, you know, get a call in, you know, a few days time with some bad news like I've, I've experienced it like you know i've had friends that you know just it the most frustrating thing in the world is for someone to not reach out if someone just said something we could have done something about it but then you get that, that call three days later saying that something the worst yeah. thing possible has happened and it's yeah. honestly the worst thing in the world thinking that you could have done something but it's also a two-way thing you know it's important for us to reach out to those people as well as for them to reach out to us sad Thank you so much, A, for chatting to us and B, for sharing and, and no, the help as well. So thank you so time, much. Anytime, honestly. Thanks for having me. You know, it's nice to be able to talk about it because um, it's something I've always pushed for with myself is that mental health and stuff like that does need to be addressed more. And if someone hears me, hopefully, ramble on for five minutes, then it, and it inspires them to, you know, speak out, then job done. That was powerful, the stuff that Saj was talking about. Yeah, had tears in my eyes. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's something, that's the whole reason we... I set up the business as well as part of it was to help more people like that. And that interview, even yesterday, I came off and was like, wow, like, you know, we're doing something here. And yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I've lost so many friends and it's it's not, I want to kill that trend. You know, I think anyone who's been in armed forces at least knows someone in their, in the area of, you know, where they are, their camp or something that, you know, They've lost to mental well-being or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, yeah, powerful yeah, stuff. Very powerful stuff. And I think the whole point is, though, I said it in that interview, you know, esports is called a community for a reason. So if, if it has the ability to help people reach out and talk about it, and if you can, when you are gaming, it does take some of that intensity off. You, are, you can have quite an honest conversation, can't you, with the people around you? Exactly. Please, exactly. if you need any help or anyone needs anything, just please reach out to someone, um, anyone in the esports community, anyone in work, anything much rather have that than you know uh, yeah. that dreaded phone call so. uh yeah definitely the space force uh we're Ooh. definitely gonna provide the smoke for them today and uh we're definitely taking our trophy on